Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are actually on our way to go and pick up some reclaimed lumber and I'm really excited. I'm thinking that I'm gonna make a coffee table or a console table or something like that. I'll put my ideas up here but I will show you guys whenever I get it back what I pick up and I'm super excited. Okay guys, so I got the boards home and I'm gonna show them to you. I love them, they look so awesome. Okay, so here they are. They're pretty long, but that's good because I can cut them down and make them how I want them to be. But they've got a lot of wear and I've gotta like remove the nails and stuff and smooth them out some, but I think it's gonna be a really cool start. Uh, and some holes and stuff so I've got to remove some things but it's gonna be super awesome and while I was there I found out that these boards came from a house that was built in 1910 so that's really cool and has a lot of history too so it's been a couple days since I went and got the reclaimed wood and I still just can't commit to if I'm gonna make the coffee table or the console table. So I'm asking you guys over on Instagram to vote for me and see which one you guys think that I should make. So I'm just gonna let you guys pick for me because I can't decide. So if you don't already follow me over on Instagram, make sure you go give me a follow so that you guys can stay updated with things like this that I'm doing behind the scenes. So we're gonna go ahead and in the meantime, get the wood ready for whatever it is that I decide to make or that you guys decide to make. So. I'm going to go ahead and pull out all the nails and get it ready to sand down and use. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm basically just going to go through here with a hammer and pull out all of the nails that are in here. And also these like wire things, like what they use to run the wire through them. So we're going to pull all those out and get it cleaned up. that out. So I got all of the nails out and the little porcelain wire holder things out. So next I'm going to go in with some sandpaper, some really heavy sandpaper to really smooth this out just because like I had to put on gloves because I can't even touch it without getting splinters. So we're going to really smooth it out but still try to keep some of that texture and the detail so that it still looks like old wood so i'm gonna have to run to the hardware store to pick up some heavy grit sandpaper because i don't really keep that on hand i'll probably use my belt sander just to really get in there so i decided to go ahead and go with the 120 grit sandpaper so that i can get off some of these splinters and it not be so rough but still maintain that nice like rustic feel so that I'm not taking out all the ridges and the like carved in places and things like that. So it'll still have character but it'll be not splintery to the touch. Okay it's getting dark and I'm literally covered in sawdust so I need to go take a shower and I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow and we are going to try out some different kinds of coloring techniques to give this its age look back because whenever I was sanding it's kind of taken away that like agey look so we're going to try out some cool things tomorrow. All right ignore the mess in the garage in the background we are going to mix up this solution that's going to lighten the look of our wood because whenever I sanded it down it started to get more of like an orangey tone and that is not the vibe that is not what I'm going for so I'm going to be bleaching this wood 
And to do that, I looked into a bunch of different methods to bleach it, and I feel like this is the one that is going to give me the results that I want. So we are going to be mixing up some lye with some water, and I'll give you guys the stuff in a minute, and some hydrogen peroxide, and then these are going to create a chemical reaction that's going to lighten the wood. So you want to make sure that you're using a plastic container. So this is just an old milk jug that I cut off the top of. And you're going to want to mix your lye into the water with that. So we are going to mix up I left my water. So we're going to be mixing up our water and our lye together first so that we have it ready to go. And you want to make sure you wear eye protection because you don't want it to splash in your eyes or anything like that. So we are going to mix up one quart of water, which is four cups. And then we're gonna use, I'm using this lye I had the most difficult time finding this. So I finally found this 100% lie at Ace Hardware. And I look real cool in these glasses. Um, you can order it off of Amazon. I saw it there. But I wanted to have it quick. So I was like going to all these different stores trying to find it. So I got this 100% lie. And you'll usually find it with like the Drano and things like that. Um, because they used to use it to clean out your drains and obviously you can still use it like it says drain opener on it so it's just this 100% lye and that is going to help us get that chemical reaction so we're going to get three tablespoons of the lye and you want to mix it up in between each tablespoon and it'll basically just kind of look like cloudy water okay so once we've got our lime mixed up we are first going to apply this hydrogen peroxide all over the wood so I'm actually just gonna try and see instead of brushing it on if I can just kind of like squirt it on there so we'll see how that works out if not I'll just paint it on with a brush so we are going to make sure that you get it all over the wood so that you have a consistent color throughout otherwise it'll be a little darker in areas and we're gonna drench it with this and then we'll go in with the lye. So I'm just squirting this hydrogen peroxide onto the wood and then spreading it out with this paintbrush to make sure that I get the wood covered evenly. And then using a clean brush, I'm applying this lye mixture very carefully so that it doesn't splash on me at all. Then the mix started to turn like a yellowy color too, so I don't know if that was the color already coming off of the wood or if it was just the reaction to the peroxide, but you can already start to see the wood lightening up. So I've got the hydrogen peroxide and the lye applied to the wood pieces, and now I'm just going to let it sit in the sun, and that's going to help in the bleaching process. But if you are going to do this, make sure that you take all the precautions that you need to. Wear safety goggles, wear gloves. I didn't have any latex gloves or anything like that, but I should have worn them because I got just a little bit on my thumb and when I was washing my hands afterwards, it just feels a little like too soft. So definitely wear gloves if you're gonna do this and eye protection and make sure that you're mixing all this stuff up in plastic containers because it'll eat through the metal. So. This is serious <laughs> and stay safe. So I'm gonna let this dry in the sun and let it bleach for a little bit and then we'll check on in it in a little bit.
Okay guys, so now I have let this sit on here, this lime wash stuff, for like six hours-ish. And I don't think that you need to leave it on that long. I was just trying to do some other stuff and take care of my kids and stuff. So I am now, we have to clean this lime off and make sure that it's no longer active. So to do that, I'm going to use some white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, and I've mixed it in half white vinegar and half water. And this is just going to clean it off because right now it's kind of got like a yellowy tinge to it and that is from the lime. So once we wipe that off, we're gonna be able to see the true color of our beautiful wood and we still maintain all of the texture and the wear, but got rid of that more orangey red tone so i think that this worked so we're going to see once we get all of this off to apply this vinegar mix i'm just brushing it on with the paintbrush to get good and covered and then i'm going to go back over it with the shop rag to wipe it off and i'm just using this kroger bag as a glove since i didn't have any so i'm just making sure to rub it and get all of the yellow off so i've got the vinegar wash all on and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it one more time just with plain water to make sure that it's nice and clean and all the vinegars off and then tomorrow we can really see the true color once it dries because we have to let it completely dry before we do anything else with it and I forgot to mention earlier that you guys voted on Instagram for me to build the console table so we will start getting ready to assemble that tomorrow and we'll probably finish the project tomorrow hoping we'll see if my kids nap well <laughs> but hopefully we can get that finished tomorrow and get it wrapped up so I'm excited to see what this looks like once it gets completely dry in the morning okay guys so it is the next day and our boards are dry and I'm so happy with how the color changed after they got all nice and dried it is so drastic I'll put a clip of it here I'll show you guys outside right now but they're like power washing a house next door and it's so loud so we are going to go ahead and measure out where we're going to cut it at and get our pieces cut down so that we can assemble it so let's go the average height of a console table is usually 30 inches tall so i marked off the boards for the legs in 32 inch segments just to give me a little bit of wiggle room in case i messed up the cuts or something and then I measured my top to be 66 inches long and that just fit my space well. Then we went ahead and cut the tabletop to size using the table saw. Okay, so at first we were going to try and cut this with the table saw, but it was just not super easy to get the wood across, so we are going to use our skill saw, and the skill saw has an attachment on it, or not an attachment, but it has the ability to cut at an angle. So we're going to cut it at about a 10 degree angle, and that'll give us a nice slant to our legs. So we're using the skill saw to do that. And I think it's going to be the best option here. To make the legs, we cut the boards in the same direction at a 10 degree angle for the first and the second cut. And for the third, we needed to flip the board over long ways so that the angle would be the right way. Next, I went in with a 320 grit sandpaper just to knock down some of the wood grain and splinters that came up from all the liquids that we put onto here. All right, so we've got our sanding done and these are looking so nice. So we are going to attach them together. So to do that, I've got this little Craig jig thing. It's like to make pocket holes. So. I'm going to make four pocket holes on the inside of both of the legs so that we can screw it into the board for the top and it'll be not as noticeable and we'll just be very secure and then we'll go in and cover up those screws later. 
So I am currently trying to figure out how far in I want these legs to go because I don't want it to be too far in, but I don't want it to overhang either because if I put them far out, then they're going to like stick out further than the tabletop does. So I'm thinking that eight inches in looks the best. We're going to go with eight inches in on either side. So I'm just going to mark that off so I can line up my board with it and drill this in and then it will be put together and then we can do the finishing touches and I'm getting very excited about this. I'm sure that this is super strong. I'm going to be using some wood glue to just really help it stay in place and hold on tight because I don't want this to break and fall apart if my kids pull on it or something. So I think this is going to be pretty secure with the wood glue and the pocket hole screws. So we're going to go ahead and put this on and then we can put our screws in and be good. It's really helpful when attaching these legs to have someone to hold the leg in place and someone to drill in the screws so the leg stays in the right spot. Here is the table all assembled. I'm loving how this is looking and all we have to do now is fill in those holes and seal it up. Alrighty guys, it is the next day and we are on the final stretch with this table. So I'm just gonna go in with some wood filler and fill in those pocket holes that we drilled to connect the two pieces. And then we're gonna seal it up and I'm gonna show you guys what sealer that I'm gonna use to make sure that we're keeping this nice natural wood look. So let's fill them in first. So now that the wood filler is dried, I'm going to just sand it down and then go in with a little bit of wood stain to kind of blend it in a little bit more and then put the wax over top of that too. My head was completely in the way of the shot, but I'm using this first stain called Weathered Oak to cancel out the orange tone of the wood filler. And then I'm going in with this other fruit wood stain and this is going to give some of that brown color back so that it blends in better with the wood tone. I'm going to go ahead and start to seal this piece and I did a lot of research because I really wanted to keep the nice weathered color. I didn't want to put a sealer on it and it changed the color of the wood. So. To do that, I saw a lot of people doing like a whitewash before they did their poly covering thing. But then I found this product and it's a white wax and I actually just got it from Walmart. It's Waverly White Wax. So this is going to be kind of like an all-in-one for us so we don't have to do a whitewash and then seal it. This will give it the whitewash and seal it. So that white color in there is going to help to kind of cancel out any of the orangey tones that the wax would pull up out of it. So I'm just going to be buffing it on with this little buffing brush that I also picked up at Walmart with this. And we're just going to buff it in really good and just use a little bit so that we don't have too much white on there but it's just going to be just enough to where it'll seal it and cancel out the orange that the wax brings up so i'm just going to put some on paper plate and just start buffing it in i'm just using the smallest amount
I figured out that the best way to apply this without getting too much of that white look on the wood was to get a really small amount onto the brush and then dab it all over the board to keep it all from being in one spot. And then you can spread it out with the brush and then buff it in with a cloth. And doing it this way is really gonna help to keep that natural look of the wood while still giving it some protection and just a little bit of shine when the light hits it to make it look nice and finished. And that finishes off this console table. You guys, I cannot believe how good this turned out. I love this console table so much and think that it adds so much character and personality to a space. And I love that I was able to keep this rustic feel with all the texture and the worn out parts of the wood. I love that so much. And that I was also able to brighten it up and get rid of that orangey tone because I was not feeling that. So. So happy with how this turned out. If you guys like it, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I make new videos like this every single week on home decor, DIY home decor, and making your home look high end on a budget. So if you like that kind of thing, then definitely hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of those videos. And I will see you on my next one. Bye guys.